All right, this is the third and final video on the events of Japanese expansion in the 1930s. Uh, this video will specifically focus on the international response to the Second Sino-Japanese War that began in 1937. So first off, Japanese response. At home in Japan, the Sino-Japanese War was a subject of debate. Politicians argued over whether keeping China as the main focus was the best plan, where they were seemingly having difficulties uh, getting anywhere. Some also felt this was distracting from the true enemy of communism and the Soviet Union, which should be the focus of any war in the future. Economically, the unemployment problem in Japan had been solved, as most males had been drafted and sent to fight, females had been put to work producing goods for soldiers. In March of 1938, the Diet actually passed a national mobilization law which gave the government power to conscript labor for the war. Toyota, which began as a cotton producing business, transitioned to produce motor vehicles for the war effort as well. Civilians were asked to tighten their belts, and on certain days, restaurants were ordered to close, as were bars, and people were asked to eat cheap and simple meals so that they could have food for the soldiers at the front in China. At the League of Nations, uh, many members were anti-communist and therefore secretly hoped Japan was strengthening its position for a war against the Soviet Union. Also, many of them agreed that China was pretty chaotic and the threat of a civil war there and eventually maybe a communist victory and takeover was more dangerous than, to them than Japan invading China. China actually appealed to the League in September of 1937 for them to do something about the Japanese invasion and in response the League appointed the Nine Power Treaty Conference or called a Nine Power Treaty Conference which was, which was an old group that had been put together in the 20s um, to deal with problems like this and they met in Belgium um, and basically agreed that Japan was in the wrong and called for an end to hostilities there however nothing was really done beyond this as this political cartoon depicts Japan just sort of ignored the nine power treaty in all reality, Asia was a second-rate concern for the League at this point, who was more concerned with European problems. Uh, Japan fighting in China didn't really bother them that much. What will eventually begin to raise their suspicions about Japan was when Japan began to get near uh, British and French colonies in Southeast Asia. The Soviets were happy Japan was fighting Chiang Kai-shek and thus keeping China from becoming too powerful of a neighbor. Even though Japan was a traditional enemy, Russia mostly stayed out of the conflict other than giving aid to the United Front, uh, although they did engage at times. One incident was in 1938 at Lake Kasan. Uh, stray Japanese forces crossed into an area the Soviet military was stationed and they fought. The Soviets quickly won and was able to ship more weapons to the United Front. In 1939, the Soviets fought the Japanese in Mongolia, ended up killing 20,000 Japanese, leading to Japan having to uh, eventually surrender, give a, uh, sign a treaty with the Soviets, giving them some territory in the region in return for an end to hostilities there. So it seemed like Japan was did very well very quickly against the Chinese forces, which were kind of um, not as up-to-date, but when they confronted a more modern military force like the Soviets, that was where they struggled a little bit. Over $173 million was given to the Chinese by the USSR. However, when Germany invaded the USSR in 1941, that stream of funding stopped. The United States was mostly concerned with Japan hindering the open-door policy and keeping their territory in the Philippines and Guam safe. 
Further, many in the U.S. government were staunchly isolationist, wanted to see the U.S. stay out of growing tensions overseas. That was mostly in Congress, whereas FDR, if you remember U.S. history, uh, tended to be a little more in favor of um, confronting some of these expansions, although he was more apt to do so in Europe than he was in Asia. In September of 1937, the isolationist in Congress won out by forbidding uh, shipments of weapons to either China or Japan, hoping it would hurt Japan and keep the U.S. out of the conflict. In reality, this actually ended up hurting China, as Japan produced most of its weapons in country now. The U.S. did continue to supply Japan with oil which raised the ire of some who saw this as tantamount to supporting the atrocities committed by Japan in China. The relations between the two countries were made worse in 1937 with what's known as the USS Panay incident, when the Japanese uh, accidentally sunk a U.S. ship that was in the harbor, I believe near Shanghai. Japan claimed it was an accident, paid reparations to the U.S., but this, combined with reports of what had happened in Nanjing, shocked Americans, and there began to be some money going to China in 1938. About $25 million began to go to China from the U.S. to support their effort against the Japanese. $25 million, so compare that with the Soviets who were sending $173 million, and it really, you can see it wasn't that much at first. Elsewhere, Japan decided to solidify its relationship with Germany formally in 1936. This was complicated by the fact that Nazi Germany was actually supporting Chiang Kai-shek in his battle over communism in China, and actually it supplied him with about 80% of his weaponry by 1936. Regardless, that same year, Japan and Germany signed the Anti-Comintern Pact against Communism. Despite being an ally of Japan, Germany continued to supply China as well with 60% of its weapons through 1938 until Japan finally persuaded them to stop providing their enemy with weapons. The alliance was further formalized in 1940 with the Tripartite Pact signed between Italy, Germany, and Japan. All three, basically, the commonality was anti-communist stance, anti-Western stance, um, and they had all engaged in expansionist efforts, of course, in the 1930s. When Germany signed the non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union in 1939, Japan was shocked. Russia was their traditional enemy, and they had always anticipated a war with the communist giant with Germany as an ally. Now it appeared Germany was not as concerned with Russia. After several resignations and replacements, a new Japanese administration finally coped with this new state of affairs and got back to figuring out how to free themselves from the Chinese situation. With Germany now an ally of Russia, it looked as if war with the Soviets would not happen anytime soon. With the focus now shifting from North China, Japan was also quickly running out of resources in China as it had not anticipated a long war. A solution had to be found to break the quagmire they were in in China. The solution to this was that their eyes began to drift towards Southeast Asia as a possible solution, gaining resources there that might help them finally defeat the Chinese. <laughs> 